Recently, I picked up a copy of Oscar Toledo G's book, Programming Games for Intellivision. Oscar is the developer of several hidden television games such as Space Raid, Princess Quest, and Meteors. I bought the hardcover version which is beautiful front and back. It was available for purchase on Amazon.com. He's also selling the ebook version over on his website, nanochess.org. What I thought I would do is rather than doing a quick review of the book, I thought it would be fun to do a walkthrough of the first couple chapters, following along the steps outlined in the book to get us started writing our own simple and television games. I'll be doing this on a Windows 10 PC, however you can also use a Mac or a Linux computer. If you would like to check out a complete review of the book, see the Nosewear Gamers recently posted review. The book starts out with a really nice foreword written by William M. Moeller, president of Electronite, which is an Intellivision software publisher. Then it's followed up with a short preface which explains what the intentions of the book are. In short, Oscar says NT Basic is a language compiler he created based on the popular BASIC programming language, but with extensions for the Intellivision hardware. Using NT Basic, you can create games without having to resort to the more complicated assembler language. This book covers how to program using NT Basic. Chapter 1 includes a brief explanation of the Intellivision hardware architecture. He explains the Intellivision display is 159 by 96 pixels with 16 colors arranged in a 20 by 12 grid. The Intellivision supports up to 8 sprites. The graphics memory or GROM contains 256 predefined 8x8 pixel graphics called cards of which users can define up to 64 cards of the same size. The system's sound is handled by a General Instruments AY-3-8914 sound chip. The CPU is a 16-bit processor which can address up to 64K words. Which brings us to Chapter 2. Here we are shown where to download and configure the software required to write our own Intellivision programs, which I'm going to try to walk through the steps here. So he says to go to his website, nanochess.org. Forward slash ntbasic.html. And then here's the downloads. And then he says, this is weird, he says to get the latest download from Atari H forums. So it's not even here on his website. So let's um, navigate over to the Atari age and get that version. Okay, so here, here are all the versions. I'm gonna download the latest one, 1 1.2.9, and save it. Yeah, I can save it right here in the downloads folder. Okay, so that's NT Basic. He also says we need to download the the emulator for this so let's go over to that web page and let's download I'm gonna download the Windows version let's go to the downloads folder and unzip those programs now I'm just I don't like them to sit here in the in this folder I'm gonna copy them over I'm going to cut and paste them and put them in the root. Create a new folder out here. Basic, anti basic programs. Now, following his guide, he wants us to create a, an anti, anti basic folder, so we'll do that here. For, for our programs. Just make a directory. And so that I was just following chapter two, page one, or actually on page five. Now I'm on page six. And he says to copy over ntbasic underscore prolog, ntbasic underscore epilogue, anything else? ntbasic.exe and ntcolor.exe. So copy these.
Now, he also says we need IntelliVision ROMs here, and it's interesting, we need exec.rom and grom.rom. And it says you can find them on the internet and copy them into that same folder, and that's lovely, isn't it? Let me go and try to find those. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to copy the exec and the grom and put them into that folder. Hopefully these are the right ones. No idea. At this point I wanted to point out that the extensions must be .bin instead of .rom as indicated by the book. The programs will not compile unless they have those extensions. I also need to copy over a couple of executables from the, the JZINTB folder. And that is the AS1600, JZINTV.exe. I'm holding uh, left click, left control, SDL.dll, what else? libw winp thread dll for windows cut copy okay now that we have the the int basic files in place, the exec, the grom, and the four files that are required for jzintv emulator, we should be able to write our first program, which is on page 7. So let's do new text document. And he says to call this hello BAS and you say yes to rename it then we'll open it with notepad more apps oops and we're going to type in the program as he has it print at zero color seven comma quote capital H E L L O world exclamation while one colon wind so I, I think that's just an endless loop and it should print a hello world at the top oops I'm not gonna leave I'm gonna hit cancel save and then follow the steps to run the program so he says to run a command prompt and I'm gonna change to the INTY basic folder and okay now he says to type INTY basic space hello.bas space hello.asm enter and that looks just like the printout he has on page 7 so I guess that compiles it into an ASM file then you have to assemble the code in Windows he says to type AS1600 space minus o hello space hello dot asm okay, that looks good and then to run the program you type jz intv minus z3 hello haha -ha, there's our first <laughs> in television program running in the emulator now Let's see, let me close that. Those are a lot of steps. So what I wanted to do was simplify those steps. Save this. C colon anti basic 
I was going to call it like make dot bat. Let's go back in here. So if we just if we just run it now, it runs the program. But I think it would be better if we went ahead and just pass the name of the program in to the basic to the um, batch file just by passing the first parameter as percent one. saving that. That way if we have another program we can use the same program. So make hello is how you would run it. And so then now if we just anytime we want to run it we just type the word make and then the program name and I think that's a little easier than remembering those programs all the time. Those other three commands. So let's experiment a little uh, with the color since it's really simple to do to change the color value here. Let's try what, what will 6 do, for example. Ah, so it went to like a slight yellowish color. Let's try what's, let's go with what's 8 do. Eight is black. Okay, I assume. I assume. I don't know. Let's try. Let's try five. Yeah. So we got a green there. Okay. Okay. So that takes us to the end of chapter two. Your first basic program. In chapter three, he starts off showing the same program with the with a go to command and he has a comment on, on, on page 10 or on page 9 he has a comment and he, and he starts going into how you can set up variables and the different commands that you can use in basic so I'm skipping ahead to page 12 our first NT basic program I'm just going to use the same program here but I'm just going to copy over it he has CLS, and I don't know if these are case sensitive, we'll find out. Define 5, comma 1, comma, smiling face. C equals 0. Now he has comments, I'm not bothering to type them in, and he does stress that you can put as many comments in you want as you want, and the compiler strips them all out, and it doesn't slow down your program at all. Main loop. Hashtag back tab C equals dollar sign zero eight zero seven plus five times eight. So here it says place it on the screen. So I'm going to hit save, and I would recommend you save frequently when you're writing program code. And let's go over here, run, run the batch file to run this again. Oh, we got an error. Error, error, error. Didn't see this. An equal sign in line 16 is required. Ah, I missed a colon right here. It's not going to compile without that, although the compiler itself says I needed a equal sign. There it goes. <laughs> I was like, oh, it doesn't do anything. So that's cool. That's our second basic program. 
from page 12 and 13. So he explains here on page 13 that the back tab is an array. So he says, let's go over how the program works. It's clear, it clears the screen using CLS and then defines our custom graphics using define, which points to smiling face where it's where a set of eight bitmap statements create the smiling face. Notice that each bitmap statement's statement contains eight pixels between the quotes. The period marks a zero, no pixel. And the X marks a one pixel drawn. There's a variable C to contain the current coordinate of the face. Its value runs from zero to 239. The face is loaded onto the screen using the hashtag backtab array. This points to the screen composed of 20 by 12 cards, 240 cards in total. All right, so that's on page 13. Oh, and then on page 14, he's pointing out the 16 colors of the Intellivision. So it has the, the color layout, which is weird. Okay. And then he starts talking about the wait command the def and a few more extra commands here. The upper eight colors are available for display, but this depends on the current display mode. Okay, more on that later. An important statement is wait because it synchronizes the execution with the current frame display. This is important because some events, some display events like define, border, and sprite only happen at the vertical blanking of the display. In a, in, a INT, uh, in a NTSC in television, weight synchronizes to the next 160th frame of display, while on a PAL in television, it synchronizes to the 150th frame of display. Using five weight statements in a row is equivalent to waiting one twelfth of a second for NTSC or one tenth of a second for PAL. Okay, so you learn a little as you go. This is what's so terrific about the book. I think I'm going to stop it here with the right before the very next item uh, that's the stopping at 3.1 the very next one is 3.2 our first sprite so I'm enjoying walking through the book and I find it very uh, interesting to learn how to program on the Intellivision so if you would like to learn how to program on the Intellivision pick up a copy of Oscar's book over at amazon.com or the ebook from his website you're sure to enjoy it thanks for watching